And is among them making his pitch by pitching for his 12th straight victory. He hasn't lost since April 19th. He drew the Mets. Second batter of the game, not such a great start. Mike Cameron cranks it. Solo shot, number eight on the season. And look again. Pitch location is everything. Brian Schneider set up low and away. Hernandez misses his spots. And Cameron, well, he hit his. 1-0, Metropolitans just like that. Nationals leading 3-2 in the six. Ramon Castro against Hernandez now with the bases loaded. And that is a base knock through the hole on the left side. David Wright comes around. Hits Wright with the throw. He's safe. Hernandez then grabs the loose ball and throws it to first to get Castro napping. 4-3 Mets, though. Hernandez allowed five earned runs, eight hits in seven innings. Bottom six, Jose Vidro against Tom Glavin. Glavin walks Vidro to load the bases, so Willie Randolph not messing around. Go into the bullpen. Going to bring in Aaron Heilman. Heilman against Jose Guillen now. Guillen grounds to second. Anderson bobbles, but does recover and throws out again. Mets get out of the jam and win at 5-3. Hernandez suffers his first loss since April 19th. Chris Carpenter with the built-in advantage of twirling in front of Tony La Russa. The Cards in Arizona trying to win his fifth straight start. 4-0 with a 0.27 ERA in that span. Gets Luis Gonzalez in the first. Javier Vasquez pitching well as well in the fourth against Jim Edmonds, who homered off him earlier. Nothing there. Next batter, Albert Pujols. Watch your step as you exit the box. Vasquez would retire 17 in a row at one point. Carpenter against Sean Green. Green out swinging. But in the sixth, Carpenter would allow just one hit against Alex Cintron. Alex Cintron muscles up. Third of the year for him. Carpenter's scoreless streak ends at 22 innings, and the game is tied at one. So in the ninth, runner on second for pinch hitter Abraham Nunez against Vasquez. And Nunez. Going to butt the runner over to third. That's fundamental baseball. Sound fundamental baseball. One out now. Next batter, David Eckstein. He's going to drop the suicide squeeze. Here comes So Taguchi in to score it. The cards get the go-ahead run. They're up 2-1. Watch it again. Eckstein catches everybody off guard. Nice call from La Russa. Nicely executed by Eckstein. Taguchi scores. And that sets it up for Jason Isringhausen. D-backs threatening, but... Izzy induces the fly ball from Jose Cruz Jr. Cards win their fourth straight. Carpenter gets his 13th win, tied for most in the majors. More NL All-Stars on the mound. How about Jake Peavy starting for the Padres in Houston, but getting into some early trouble in the first inning, facing Morgan Ensberg already down 1-0. And, while well, that's ball three. Peavy trying to fire himself up. Let's go! Full count. Left corner. Lance Burke, and they will wave him all the way from first. And the Astros are up 2-0, looking for their 13th win in 16 games. Another look here. And again, Matt, it's location issues. PV, look where the target is right there. Got to hit your spot. Well, he doesn't here. It's way inside. He would allow five runs on 11 hits and five and two-thirds. Not real sharp. Next up, Adam Everett to center. Ensberg scores. They wave him in. And the Astros have a 3-0 lead. Meanwhile, Andy Pettit would get some help. On the mound for the Astros after they settle PV down. Top three, Khalil Green up there. Lines to Ensberg at third. Guns him out at first, but Pettit would have to leave after five with tightness in that left elbow. He's day to day. The left elbow, very scary for Pettit. Astros win 5 4, and Gray Oswald getting congratulations for winning the final NL All Star spot. He's on his way to Detroit. Johan Santana already an all-star, but not pitching like one against the Angels. Santana winless in his last four starts as he took the hill against Minnesota. Seventh inning, two on, one out, 5-3 twins. Garrett Anderson out like Chumba Wumba. It's a three-run poke, his 11th of the season. And take a good look. We have a theme developing here. A Chumba Wumba theme? No, not that one. Thank it's goodness. hitting your spots. All right. He didn't. That's pretty much straight down the middle, belt high fastball, and a guy like Garrett Anderson knows what to do with that. He deposited it. Halo's up 6 5. Jesse Crane on in relief two batters later. Juan Rivera gives Crane the same treatment. Angels get some insurance. A 4 1 7 puts them up 7 5. In the eighth, runners on second and third. Shannon Stewart, your batter. That's a chopper. That's the Baltimore chop, although it's executed by a Minnesota twin. Juan Castro scores. Twins within a run 7-6. But runners on the corners from Nick Punto. That's a fly ball to left. Anderson makes the catch. Michael Ryan's going to test him.
and he passes. Oh, Anderson with a nice throw. Jose Molina applies the tag. Ryan is out at home. Meet at the plate. Great throw by Anderson. Nice work by Molina. Anderson fired up. He was also two for four, including that home run. So in the ninth, K-Rod on for the save. Justin Morneau, ground ball to second. Look at Adam Kennedy ranging to make the great play and get Morneau at first. Angels hold on to win at 7-6. That's 13 wins in 16 games. Welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthew, Matt Weiner along the way. The Red Sox have a new closer. Schilling needs the innings as he rehabs that ankle, and the Sox have a gaping hole to fill. Remember, along with 373 career starts, the 38-year-old has also made 112 appearances in relief. Now he'll try to provide some relief for the beleaguered Boston bullpen. Oh, he's got the mentality, temperament to be a good pitcher at any point in the game. He can get him out in the first, he can get him out in the ninth, he can get him out in the eleventh. It doesn't matter. He's a good pitcher, and we're trying to maximize that right now, and that's why we're doing this. He's having, everybody knows the, the, the tough time he's having with his ankle and coming back. You know, to repeat that delivery maybe a hundred times in a game, I'm not sure he can do that right now and be as effective as he has been. But to do it for an inning or two, I think we think we got one of the premier pitchers in the game, and he agrees, so we're going to take advantage of it. And they need him because the Boston pen is in a fix because closer Keith Folk will have arthroscopic surgery on his left knee Thursday. The team placed Folk on the disabled list after he blew two saves in a week's time. Francona said Folk's knee has actually been bothering him for years now. I don't know why I'm here today. I'm here to apologize for my unacceptable behavior last week. And against the advice of my legal counsel, uh, and regardless of potential litigation, I feel compelled to come before you and express my deep regret for my actions. I offer my sincere apologies to Larry and David. An incident should never have occurred. To all my fans, my teammates, and my family, I am truly sorry for any disappointment that I've caused you. I've been around this game for over 20 years. I prepare myself every day to control my emotions and act accordingly. In this instance, I failed miserably. I've got 17 years in the major leagues. With all my experience, regardless of the circumstances, I should have acted professionally. And I regret that that was not the case. I'm deeply disappointed and embarrassed in myself for my inability to rise above the situation no matter how it became. This incident was completely out of character and I think without question it, you know it will never happen again. I've already personally apologized to my teammates and I hope that in the future that there will be a chance for me to personally do that to Larry and David. I hope you understand I'm not in position to, to take questions on this subject for all the possible things that could occur afterwards. And I thank all of you for your time. I know you have a busy schedule and all that. Thank you very much. Remember, Kenny Rogers was a player selection for the American League All-Star team, meaning he was voted onto the team by his peers. Later in Sports Center, the question, should he go? Pardon the interruptions, Tony Kornheiser and Michael Smith will give their answers. If Kenny Rogers does not go to the All-Star game, Matt Clement would take his spot. Clement starting for the Red Sox in Texas Wednesday night and getting some offensive support from Big Poppy in the sixth. 431 feet, 21st of the year for David Ortiz in his second in two nights. Top seven, Johnny Damon. You know, he's got a little hit streak going. Mm -hmm. A major league season high and career high, 22 games. This in support of Clement, who struck out nine and eight and two-thirds. Two batters later, it's Ortiz. He singles. This will score two. Bellhorn and Damon come in. The Red Sox have a 5-2 lead. And then things get a little, well, zany. It's Manny Ramirez. I know he's involved. That's a big surprise. Sure. Deep center. Now, Ortiz is on his way to third. You figure they'll wave him in, but they put, no, they put, they put the brakes on him. It's an anti-Wendell Kim moment. And Manny, now this is a bizarro world. Manny's upset. Manny Ramirez criticizing Red Sox base running technique. Cost him an RBI. It's a world gone mad. Well, everybody's having fun anyway. Ninth inning, the struggling Alan Embry gets his first save. 
and the Red Sox win 7-4 as Matt Clement gets to 10-2. and two. Boston goes into Baltimore this weekend, four up on the Orioles and four and a half ahead of the Yankees. Lou Pinella says people are going to think I'm crazy. Well, Tampa Bay's losing seems to be driving Pinella off the deep end. So to reverse the Devil Rays' fortunes, Pinella is reversing the game. Now, here's the plan. Tampa's relief pitchers will now start games, and the starters will come in about the third inning. I'm going to start a reliever, let him pitch an inning or two, then I'll bring my starter in, said the evil genius. D-Ray <laughs> starter Casey Fossum said, obviously, we got to try something. But Fossum started Wednesday's game against the White Sox. The Pinella plan still waiting in the wings, apparently. Devil Rays on a seven-game losing streak. They'd lost 10 of 11 overall. Scott Pitsednik selected as the final AL All-Star, honored by the Chicago fans. Everybody on your feet. All right, third inning. Pitsednik going up the middle. Pablo Azuna goes to third. Long inning for Fossum. will allowed six earned on 11 hits in six. So they're loaded now for Carl Everett. He goes to shallow center. Joey Gathright, well, you're a little too deep. But Sednik, Tadahito Iguchi score. White Sox up 3-1. Everett was 3-4. for four. Bottom five, Frank Thomas. Hurts so good. His 11th and second three-run home run in as many games. White Sox win 7-2. They complete the three-game sweep. Jose Contreras gets his first win since June 7th. Jeremy Bonderman pitching for the Tigers. Talk about your all-star snubs facing CC Sabathia in Cleveland. Top five, Pudge. Doubles off the wall in left center. Maglio Ordonez is waved in, and Detroit goes up 5-1 on the trot. Bottom six, Bonderman working to Aaron Boone. A lot of Tigers upset that Bonderman's not going to Detroit. Well, he's already there, but, you know, yeah. all-star, sure. Right. Carlos Guillen from the seat of his pants, a top play nominee. And, well, this got us thinking, Matt, you know, some other memorable bottom plays, sort of a play on words here. Mm -hmm. March 20th, Blake Harfarber, the Hopkins High School, the buzzer beater. Sure. And then Tom Brady against the uh, Bengals from the seat of his pants. Tried that the next week against Miami. It was run back for, well, we won't talk about that. 98 Devils Flyers, Brian Ralston beating the Beezer. So back to Wednesday. Here's another look. Detroit, nice play. Win 7-3. Bonderman gave up just five hits in eight for his 11th win. He's 5-1 and one in his last six starts, but not going to the All-Star game. But he's in Detroit. He's in Detroit. Go if you want. Some consolation. You yeah. could look at it that way. He's the first pitcher age 22 or younger to accumulate that many wins before the All-Star break since Seattle's Dave Fleming in 92. Coughlin would just be going nuts. Late as ordered in Toronto. Facing Ted Lilly, who, whoa, he's just tremendous. Top four rings up Eric Chavez, Bobby Kilty, and Eric Byrne strikes out the side. Lilly went seven scoreless, allowed six hits. He struck out five. He's now four and one in his last five starts. Bottom eight, Vernon Wells, yard, three-run shot. His 16th, and the Blue Jays win eight-nothing. So that whole get to the ballpark late, relax thing, yeah, yeah, not so much. No, maybe not. Phillies and the Pirates. Mark Redman on the mound for the Pirates Wednesday. Lost his last three straight. Looking for a long-term contract with Pittsburgh. Top third, no score. Runner on second. Two outs. Jason Michaels, the blooper to right field. And nobody's got that. Mike Lieberthal is going to score. Fills up 1-0. In the seventh, 3-0. Bases loaded one out. Michaels grounded to first. Darrell Ward throws home. Uh, not so much. Umberto Cota pulled off the plate. There's the foot. There's the plate. That's safe. That's a run. Phillies up 4 0. In the seventh, bases loaded again. Rick White wings that away. Tomas Perez comes in to score. Phillies take it 5 0. Phillies had as many walks as hit, six of each. Pirates for 500 on June 11th, six of 17 since. We saved it for now. The game of the night in the major leagues. The Brew Crew and Marlins in Miami. And boy, was A.J. Burnett impressive. Top one, Milwaukee up 3 0. Burnett gets Damian Miller and Tomo Oka. His third strikeout pitch count up to 33. Let's go to the second inning now. Burnett gets Chris McGruder. That's his fourth strikeout. Then Lyle Overbeck, his fifth K, the pitch count up to 46. To the third, El Caballo, Carlos Lee. Sixth strikeout. Then Oka again, seventh strikeout for Burnett. Pitch count 74. Not exactly efficient. <laughs> fourth inning. Magruder again. Eighth K. Ricky Weeks is number nine on the 89th pitch. Fifth inning. It's El Caballo again. This is the 10th K for Burnett. Then Jeff Jenkins is the 11th. And finally, Bill Hall on the 110th pitch is number 12. Sixth inning. Burnett still blowing guys away. J.J. Hardy 
13th K. Then Oka again. Burnett's 14th strikeout on 125 pitches. The K's tie his career high. He went six, allowed four runs on four hits. In the seventh, the Marlins, well, they continue the theme. Jim Mercier to Overbay, 4-3 ground out. 13th consecutive Brewer, retired by Marlin pitching. To the ninth we go. Guillermo Mota facing Russell Branyan. And Mota retires Branyan, the 19th consecutive Brewer, retired by Marlin pitching. Two extras in the 11th. Todd Jones facing Bill Hall. And Bill Hall is the 25th consecutive Brewer, retired. 12th inning. Valerio de los Santos, Wes Helms. I mean, can we get a Brewer hit here? You know what? No. Marlins retire 28 consecutive Brewers from the third inning on. Well, now they got to win the game, right? Bottom 12, 4-4. They're loaded. Wes Obermuller, Juan Encarnacion. There it is, up the middle. Juan Pierre comes in. The Marlins win 5-4, a team record 22 Ks. Jack McKeon said, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. He's 74. He should know. Seen a lot of stuff. A.J. Burnett is the fifth pitcher since 1920 to strike out 14 men in a game without pitching more than six innings. Florida pitcher retiring 28 consecutive Brewers, the longest streak for any major league team since the Phillies' Rick Wise retired 32 straight Cubs at the Vet in 1971. Hey, what happened in that Dodger-Rocky game, you're asking? Well, Jim Tracy's Dodgers has been tough sledding the injury bug, biting them lately. Jeff Kent's got the hammy, Cesar is tourist, the hammy, Milton Bradley, the finger, J.D. Drew's wrist has him out for eight weeks, and Eric Gagne is gone for the year, so, you know, something's got to go. Tough going. Yeah, top first, Jason Phillips trying to help out. Oh, three-run shot off Sean Chacon, who came off the DL before the game, coincidentally. Phillips is sixth. Dodgers lead 4-0. Top seven, Antonio Perez filling in for Jeff Kent, who uh, is injured in keeping with the theme. Three-run shot. Perez is 30. was three for five. A career-high five RBIs. The Dodgers win 9-5. L.A. wins for just the seventh time in its last 22 games. Back over there? Hey, you never know. Right, top warming. Number 10, Grand Isle, Louisiana. It's warming up there. These are kids water skiing on grass. Thanks for that. Number nine, the Phillies and the Pirates at PNC. Rob McCoviak with a great diving catch, but the Phillies won the game 5-0. It's a beautiful ballpark, PNC. Gorgeous out here. Get a, get a chance. you got to check it out. Waiting for an invite. Yeah, Number eight, uh, Brewers Marlins. That's David Ogie Organ, who set the world record for striking golf balls in 60 seconds. He hit 82 of them in that time. Takes me uh, usually 12, 13 holes. The real hero would be appear to be the guy holding the balls down there and not getting hit in the hand. Good point. Just a thought. Not named. Number seven, Tigers, Indians. Carlos Guillen from his keystern. You know, we already went over this, the whole yeah. great place from the seat of your pants. But worth another look, certainly. Detroit won the game 7-3. Another opportunity to say the word keystern. Always fun. Number six, Padres, Astros, Morgan Ensberg. Nice play to Rob Khalil Green. Astros win it 5-4. Something tells me you, you may see him later on. A little foreshadowing. We call that a tease in the business. Sure. Number five, Mariners and Royals in KC. And it's Seattle Phenom Willie Bloomquist with a diving stab. He also went three for four with three doubles. Willie Bloomquist taking over the game. But the Royals won 5-1. Number four, this is cool. Ted Double Duty Radcliffe. He's the oldest living Negro leaguer. And the man is 103 years old, thrown out the first pitch. Way to get it done. Double duty. Number three, Brewers and Marlins. A.J. Burnett on duty. Struck out 14 Milwaukee batters in six innings. The Marlins won 5-4 in 12. Florida pitchers at one point retired 28 consecutive Brewers. They struck out a team record 22. A.J.'s great. Not real efficient. Always. No. Padres Astros, number two. Did I mention Morgan Ensign? You know, you Mike, did. I remember. Yeah, he's coming back. One more time, this time going to his left to get Eric Young at first. He also had an RBI double in the Stroh's 5-4 win. And our number one play from Wednesday in the Twins-Angels game, it's Garrett Anderson go again. Anderson's going to catch it. Here comes the throw to the plate. Here comes the runner, and Molina makes the tag. He's out. A double play. Michael Ryan is cut down at the plate, and the Angels hold on to a one-run lead.